Hey guys, welcome to Ryan's Running Reviews. Today we're taking a look at a shoe with some really interesting running technology. It's the Fate 7 from Newton. Let's run with it. Before we get started, I do want to say these shoes were provided to me by Newton. However, I did not have a chance to preview this video and the final synopsis is my own. I would also like to say please leave a like on the video and consider subscribing so I can continue to make these reviews. Here we go. So a lot of you are probably asking, Ryan, what is Newton running? Well, it's a smaller running shoe company based out of Boulder, Colorado here in the United States, and they have an extremely loyal fan base. Plus on top of that, the company has a lot of unique values that really help separate it from most other running shoe companies on the market. And it really boils down to two main factors. The first big factor is that Newton strives, pun intended, to be a leader in natural running technology and form. What exactly does that mean? Well, all the shoes in the Newton lineup share similar elements. The first being these four foot lugs that really stand out compared to most other running shoes. Now, what do these lugs do? Well, they seek to reward the runner for landing on their forefoot or midfoot because Newton believes that having that kind of strike pattern is more optimal and more natural. And the last element is that Newton shoes don't have crazy stack heights like we see from a lot of other companies nowadays. They have a relatively modest amount of cushioning. So to tie it all together, all Newton shoes believe that those four foot lugs, a lower drop, and just a moderate amount of cushioning really give the runner a better, more natural running experience, especially when compared to most other traditional shoes out there. So that's the first thing that really draws people to the Newton brand. But the second is the environmental impact, not only from the company, but the environmental impact that these shoes produce as well. So I realize a lot of companies talk about this now. I think Adidas has their Parlay shoes from Ocean Plastic, and you see a lot more companies talking about recycled materials. However, Newton is definitely different because they take it to a whole new level. Newton shoes are 100% vegan and are mostly recycled materials. I believe they're going to to the 100% mark here in this next iteration of running shoes from Newton. Uh, but most of the materials in each of the Newton shoes are made from recycled components. There's actually four water bottles in every Newton shoe. And the other cool thing too is that they add something called EcoPeer to the shoe, which allows it to biodegrade or decompose I think it's like 75% faster compared to conventional shoes, which creates non-toxic biomass and biogas. So essentially the overall carbon footprint of the shoe, again, another great pun, um, is much less compared to other conventional running shoes. And then the cool thing is that Newton donates a lot of shoes to various programs around the United States, which I think is really cool because having a good pair of shoes, especially running shoes, is life-changing and really does help in the long run. Essentially, that's why Newton stands out from most other running shoe companies they have environmentalism and natural running at the top of their priority list, which shows with how they construct and build their shoes and explains why they have such a loyal fan base for being such a small running company. So enough about Newton, but I did think it was important to explain the company so we can understand the shoe better and kind of get a full understanding of why this shoe is built the way it is, especially because this is my first Newton shoe. And I think for a lot of people, this will probably be your first time seeing a Newton shoe being reviewed. So from my perspective, I think this will be kind of a good uh, take for people who might want to try a Newton out or or just haven't tried something like this before. And if you're someone who has tried Newtons before, I think the Fate 7 has a lot of good updates that I'll try to touch on and give my thoughts on as we go through this review. The Fate 7 is a neutral daily trainer, and according to Newton, the Fate was actually intended to be kind of their gateway model into the Newton brand, but people just started to pick up the shoe, and even lovers of Newton just started to use this shoe more and more, so they kept it around as it got more popular. And if you're someone who wants stability with the same kind of Fate setup, they have the Kinsman, which has something, I believe, on the medial side to give you a little bit more stability if you want it with the same kind of setup that the Fate has. This shoe only weighs 8.8 ounces, which definitely means it's on the lighter end of things, especially for a daily trainer, and the shoe itself costs $100. $140. The stack height on the shoe is relatively interesting just because you have those lugs in the forefoot, which kind of changes things. But according to Running Warehouse, they measured it and it's 32 millimeters in the heel with a 4.5 millimeter drop from the heel to the toe. This is a slightly higher drop than some of the performance models like the Gravity, which come in at three millimeters. So essentially you get 1.5 millimeters more of drop in the Fate 7. But of course, we need to talk about the most interesting part of this shoe in all Newton running shoes, because it's essentially the signature part of Newton running, which is the one, two, three, four, five lugs found in the middle of the forefoot. So these lugs here found in the forefoot are actually not static. Newton calls this action reaction technology where essentially these lugs will compress back into the midsole slightly to this orange piece here, which they call the membrane. And on top of that, they have something called XPS diffusion plate, which helps disperse the energy as you run. So essentially these lugs are active. They kind of retract a 
track back in and pop back out as you go through your run. Newton believes this lug method really does reward those forefoot runners who land on that forefoot area, and they believe it really does store energy in a more efficient way than like a solid EVA foam setup. You also do get a different kind of setup between the men and the women with regard to the lugs, so it'll basically optimize the performance depending on whether it's a men's shoe or a woman's shoe. Newton has different versions of their lugs, which they call POP. There's POP1, POP2, and POP3. The POP stands for point of power, so POP1 is going to be found on, think like on their gravity and motion models, which are a little bit more aggressive. The lugs are going to be squared off, and it's going to have a different kind of configuration where each one of those lugs individually retracts back into the midsole, where here on the fate, the shoe we're taking look at today is referred to as pop 2 point of power 2 where these lugs are actually kind of webbed together so they don't act individually and they're kind of tapered towards the front of the lug to provide a more smooth experience where again that pop 1 version found on like the motion and the gravity are a little bit more squared off so the pop 1 is more aggressive found on some of the more performance oriented models the pop 2 the ones we're taking a look at here which again the fate is an introductory shoe kind of into the newton brand which kind of stuck around against popular daily trainer has a less aggressive lug setup where they're all connected through a web pattern so they're not individual lugs essentially uh, as, as how they retract into the midsole but more so like a web that kind of retracts into that forefoot and the lugs are kind of rounded towards the front and then kind of round it all off you have the pop three so point of power three which is found on some more they're like lifestyle cross training shoes which are even more connected and a little bit less aggressive basically pop one is more performance oriented where essentially those lugs are individual uh, pieces that can retract into the membrane brain and then the pop two the one here it's more of like a webbed uh, pattern or connected pattern that retract into the membrane and then pop three is the more lifestyle less aggressive uh, more for like cross training walking and some light running uh, is even more connected and less aggressively shaped the rest of the outsole is made up of carbon rubber, which is a little bit more durable compared to like conventional rubber outsoles. And the rubber here does have that eco pure element, which helps it decompose a little bit faster. The other interesting piece in the heel area is the fact that it kind of acts like a mini trampoline. Essentially, you get this little cutout here that you can basically see the showboard foam. So your heel kind of sinks into this little kind of gap area and then bounces out as you go through your running cycle. The Rincon 3 has this where essentially they carve out the foam in the middle and then they leave the sidewalls of the midsole that kind of allow it to support it, but your heel sinks in and then pops out, which again helps with the energy return and kind of the sensation as you're running. So you kind of combine that with the storage of the lugs and the heel area and you get a really unique overall flow to your running. So that kind of brings us to our next point which is how do you get used to running in a shoe like this because it does provide a really different experience with a low drop and really aggressive lugs in the forefoot. Well essentially what I did was I lifestyled it or essentially I wear it to the grocery store, wear it on walks, wear it out and just try to get used to the overall fit and feel of the Newton Fate 7. And then once I felt relatively comfortable in it, I started to incorporate it into my running rotation where you just kind of use a mile here and there and start to up your mileage. And then for me, it took about 15 miles to feel fully comfortable using this shoe. And I get it, it's pretty strange to have a shoe that you need to adapt to. I think it's kind of scary for most consumers because they're like, well, what is that? Why are there lugs here? Why is it a low drop? Why isn't there a ton of cushioning like I see with most other shoes? I think like Ultra has this issue too where people are like, why is it a zero drop shoe? Why is a toe box funny? So I think when it comes to interesting or unique footwear for a specific purpose or a kind of a certain kind of runner, it might scare most people away. But I think if you're someone who especially lands on their forefoot a lot, I think it's a kind of a cool opportunity to try and for me personally, I liked it for my quicker days. Again, this isn't the most aggressive, fastest Newton shoe, but for me, I liked having it on quicker, I guess, daily training runs, not like a race day, but if I want to go for a fast, just daily training run, I thought this worked really well because it's light and those lugs really do give you a really cool sensation, kind of keep makes you want to keep up on your toes and going fast. And with regard to the midsole, you get kind of a traditional EVA midsole. You get a little bit of squish to it. It's, I'd say, one more firmer end of things just because you don't get a whole lot of it either, um, but it is relatively comfortable. And I think with some of the newer models they might start incorporating like super critical stuff like other gravity plus and that was a huge hit so i wouldn't be surprised if we see super critical foam make its way down to models like the fate 7 but overall the eva foam worked well i think the big story though is those lugs and the experience that it gives and just because it doesn't have a whole lot of cushion i would definitely rate it on like the more firmer responsive side of things the insert is now their softest insert ever it's updated here on the fate 7 i thought it did a good job it wasn't anything too crazy um, but it was something that they noted on their website saying that they did update this to be their softest ever and once you take out the insert, you can notice the strobe board, which kind of looks like Adidas Boost or Power Run PB from Saucony. Essentially, it's ETPU material with all these little pellets fused together and lines the strobe board of the shoe. You can actually see it here with a little window in the heel from the outsole. Here on the Fate 7, we get an updated upper. It's not a form-fitting 3D upper that was extremely comfortable. I absolutely loved it. It just fit my foot really well, true to size, 
didn't really move around a lot. It was just incredibly breathable. It might have been one of my favorite parts about this shoe uh, just because I loved how it fit my foot. The tongue on this shoe is basically, it looks like a one block of foam. They basically punched out holes to reduce the weight and make it a little bit more breathable. I loved how it fit. It's really comfortable. I wouldn't call it plush, but it just has a nice level of softness to it with the foam they used. Um, again, not overly plush, not overly thin with like a paper thin tongue, but just had a nice level of comfort that really just kind of secured the top of my foot. It's not gusseted, but it is attached slightly on both sides with a small piece of fabric that keeps the tongue from moving around. I really like this because typically when I run, the tongue just kind of goes all over the place if I don't tie it down perfectly, where this basically isn't a gusseted tongue, so you get great breathability, a lower weight, but the tongue stays put just because it has two small pieces of fabric on each side that keeps the tongue secure. Moving to the back of the shoe, you get a relatively well-built internal heel counter. It's pretty stiff, especially at the base of the shoe. The top of it is a little bit more flexible, has a little more give to it, and you do have some foam in the ankle and Achilles area, although I will say it's definitely more on the minimal side with regard to foam, although still very comfortable. The lacing system has also been updated. You get flat laces that are made out of recycled materials, and I thought they did a good job of making sure I got a good lockdown and secure fit. So those are all basic facts about the shoe. Let's talk about what I liked about the shoe and what I didn't like so much. The first thing I loved about this shoe was the fit of the upper. It's definitely on the more minimal end of things, but it's not like overly minimal where you have like thin plastic mesh, but it kept my foot secure. It was incredibly breathable and just felt very comfortable. On top of that, the tongue itself with like the foam tongue with the cutouts was extremely light and breathable. But then on top of that, it had a nice level of softness to it, which you kind of miss when you get with like those paper thin tongues or some of the racing tongues. So overall, Overall, the fit of the tongue and the upper itself, I absolutely loved and really provided a nice experience. The other big positive is I liked it for my faster runs. Again, those lugs are somewhat aggressive, even though these aren't the most aggressive lugs compared to the pop ones they have like on the motion and the gravity, but I really liked it for those faster days. Those lugs kind of make you want to keep up and just going on your toes and rolling. The shoe, again, is very light, only at 8.8 ounces, and I just loved it for those faster efforts. However, the shoe isn't perfect, and there are a couple things to probably keep in mind. The first big negative is this shoe definitely takes some planning to get used to. You kind of have to figure out how this works into your running shoe rotation, maybe lifestyle it, walk in it for a bit, make sure you get used to how this shoe is because it does have a low drop and aggressive lug pattern in that forefoot section. So if you're someone who hasn't tried that in a while, you want to ease into it and not just jump fully into it and go run 10 miles. So it does take some planning and that is something you might want to consider if you're trying a Newton running shoe. However, I think Newton has like 30 day returns so you can give it a try, run the shoe, and if it really doesn't work, you can always send it back, but they do give you that option, which I think is really nice. And the last negative or something to be aware of is depending on your running style and how you run, this hasn't personally happened to me, but if you tend to like supinate or pronate or have a weird forefoot strike pattern, you might wear out one of these lugs a little bit faster than the others. So you'll kind of get a wear pattern, which you'll have to kind of keep conscious of so you don't get injured running on shoes that are kind of lopsided. So people love their Newtons, but you do have to keep track of how your foot is striking and make sure that you're not wearing out some lugs more than the others so you don't kind of have an imbalance. So where does that leave us? Well, I think if you're a fan of Newton, you'll like the Fate 7 the updates. I love the upper, and that, I think that was one of the biggest changes they made with this model, and I absolutely loved it. So if you're a fan of the Fate, I think this will be a great update. But if you haven't tried Newton, I think the Fate is a good place to start. So some of you are probably wondering, you know, is Newton legit? And they absolutely are. They actually sponsored Harvey Lewis, uh, who is one of the best ultra runners in the United States. He won the Badwater 135 with the Gravity Plus from Newton. So a lot of legit athletes do use Newtons. I know people personally who love this shoe. It is a very, I guess, unique and special shoe just because of that action reaction technology in the forefoot and it might not be for everyone just because everyone has different running mechanics but if you're someone who loves running and you haven't tried it i say you know give it a shot you got 30 days from newton to see if you love it or hate it you can always send it back uh, but for me personally i love the upper i love the fit of it i love how light it is and if you're environmentally conscious or really want uh, less of a um ecological footprint, there's my pun, uh, I think this is a good option. Well, that concludes my review. I hope you found it helpful. Please leave a like, comment, and consider subscribing so I continue to make these shoe reviews. I'm Ryan from Ryan's Running Reviews. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks.